Hello everyone, good afternoon. I am Gagan Gupta from third year computer science, PS University with my teammate Harshita Kamani. Uh, we are presenting project EduPrep AI, which is an AI driven edtech hub, which automates lecture summarization, dynamic quiz generation and personalized learning experience. So problem statement which we face these days is we have a lot of video content, but we don't know how we can get extract out of it. So uh, we have a lengthy lecture videos, we have like student face challenges in getting personalized uh, knowledge out of that video. Let's say they want to ask questions about the video. So uh, a lot of research is going on these days on uh, PDFs, where you upload a PDF and you can query a PDF. You can ask what is this part of the PDF doing? What is this section doing? So here we come into picture for the videos. So you can upload a video and you can ask your queries and you, you might like, you can generate summarization, you can generate quizzes. So for teachers, uh, they have to create, they have to do uh, all this manually, like they have to create quizzes for the paper, uh, examination and all. So here we, uh, that's what we are doing. Uh, this is the market research which we, uh, which we did. No, our solution, our innovative ed tech platform aims to enhance the learning experience by converting educational video lectures into text somewhere around it. So, EduPrep AI is a project that summarizes lecture video at a high level. It passes both the visual and the auditory components. So what happens uh, even in the video, some of them, even in the video, some of them are like, uh, they take the audio part, but not the visual part. Let's say I'm a teacher, I'm teaching and I'm, I'm saying this is Pythagoras theorem and I'm writing Pythagoras theorem here. So this is Pythagoras theorem will be coming from the audio part. But what about the formula which she wrote? there might be any X formula. So we are getting everything in sync. This, this is Pythagoras theorem and the formula which is uh, written on the board from the board. So it's in sync. This is Pythagoras theorem and the formula. These are the features. Uh, it, it is a multimodal approach. Uh, quick summarization of lecture videos. We get a, you get an interactive panel to give quizzes and uh, enhance learning and uh, practice for your exams or uh, even if you want to test your knowledge for any video you watch on quantum learning or anything. Uh, th this can be used as a browser extension. Uh, so the roadmap, uh, we started with, uh, we distributed the weeks, we got some, we, we worked for around six weeks. So we distributed it in the first week we did this and around one and a half week we did this and the two to around three weeks uh, we were doing the thing. Uh, this is the project architecture. So we are taking the video and then, uh, then we are checking, is it a real time video? Uh, let's say a video recorded in class live lecture video. So then we are, th then this is the model which we trained a ResNet 50 model, uh, this, uh, that we fine tuned. So it is defect, it is detecting if, if that video is, uh, the video contents are, uh, useful frames or, uh, non-useful frames. And then we are doing operations, removal of du duplicate frames, removal of pre-sequential frames, which I'll be talking about, uh, afterwards, uh, frame extraction and when, uh, then OCR and then SSA. And then these are the operations which we are doing. So yeah, uh, this is how, let's say this is a video. So we, we, uh, we got the frames and this is the aligned audio with it. So uh, from frames, here is the text, which is spoken. This is the frame. And then we are taking out these figures. So you can even, uh, let's say a video is there, but you don't get what figures are there. Uh, some neurons diagram or some diagrams are there. So we are getting the diagrams as well. So you can uh, get to know what is happening in the video and everything. So it's a multimodal approach. Uh, this is about it. Uh, coming to the data set part, we have taken the lecture videos from the open access universities like MIT and Yale. And from these videos, we have uh, created our uh, data set for the ResNet and the YOLO part. Coming to the models, so basically we use ResNet for classifying the frames into these three classes, which you will be seeing later in the upcoming slides. So we trained ResNet uh, on around 15,000 images. And uh, I'll be showing you the images and, and the data set part. And these are the uh, four basic models, uh, base models, which we have used ResNet 50, Olo V9 and East and Lama 2 7FB for the A part. Uh, these, are the, these are the three classes uh, on which we are classifying uh, uh, the parameters on, of ResNet. Uh, so these are the hyperparameters which we would, and we, uh, we started training our model from ImageNet, ImageNet pre-trained pre checkpoints. In this, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, for the, uh, I'll go through each step, the code walk through. So for the, uh, uh, we, we extracted frames at a, uh, frame rate of six FPS, like, uh, 
uh, each frame is extracted at a, at six seconds. So uh, how why we are extracting at six FPS? Uh, we 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 did a lot of research, and what we found is uh, what teachers basically do is they change uh, their slides or their like uh, whatever they are teaching at six seconds. So that's why we uh, we took it as six FPS, and then we are removing the duplicates frame by using uh, mean squared error and comparing the similarity threshold. Uh, this, uh, and this is the training ResNet part. Uh, so these are the pooling layers, the final layers which we have used. And as you can see, uh, right. so these are the uh, validation data set and training data set we have used. Uh, yes, so this is the glimpse. Uh, so uh, when a video comes, we break it into frames. So these are the frames basically which we get. This is the slide. This is what we want. This is a good frame. Uh, we can just do OCR on it and extract the uh, whatever we want out of it. And this is a presenter slide. So we need operations on this. We need to crop uh, crop the uh, presenter out of it. And these are the other frames in which, like, let's say I'm, I'm covering the board. So it's not of useful because I'm covering the text. So other frames are, we are removing the other frames and we are uh, modifying this frame and we are taking this frame as the... Uh, so this is the presenter uh, slide which we showed in the previous one and then we are cropping uh, the presenter and the board and we are getting a slide. So it, it will be easier for OCR part and we are not getting the noise because these frames get a, a lot of border noise and the figure noises. Uh, and then the main part comes when you, even when you extract frames at 6 FPS, you get a lot of sequential frames. Let's say a teacher is writing A square then plus B square, plus C square. So it's a lot of sequential frames. So we don't want all these frames. It just increases the time. So we get the, we want only this frame because it has everything uh, of the text part. So what we are doing is uh, we are removing the pre-sequential frames uh, by comparing, uh, by using similarity threshold, texture similarity, by using Levenstein distance and uh, uh, structural similarity for the visual part. Uh, and then the OCR part, uh, so we have got the slides by uh, modifying the presenter slide and the normal slides and we are removing the others, so, uh, and then we are doing the OCR on it and, and for the uh, OCR, first we are removing the frames, we are getting the frames, we are masking the frames because of better accuracy of text and then we are extracting the text. Uh, uh, yeah, we do have any? So this is, this is the, uh, and then we are feeding it to Llama and we are using a map reduce function as a chain type uh, because uh, we are doing it for a like larger video or in the previous version when we didn't use like we didn't uh, use the map reduce function we were able to like um, optimizely like do around 20 minutes of videos now we can do up to like one hour or maybe more so and this is the like one of the best features you can chat with the video and ask your query uh, let's say you have some doubt uh, so i'll run through it i'll show you a live demo if you want to go through the code, this is, and uh, I'll show you the video which I've already put, and then I'll... Yeah, so one, one, okay, uh, one best use case for this could be, uh, just to like tell you the use case, uh, this is a Microsoft Learn website. So they have this knowledge check here. So how this knowledge check is created from these all the, these are the videos, four minute video, three minute video. So they have to manually create it. Uh, from, uh, using our open source platform, they can create it like, uh, automize it. Yeah, uh, this image describes what we are doing. We generated it using like manipulating a stable diffusion model. And this, we are generating quiz summary and notes and you get a, a chat with the query feature for the video. So this is the video I'm generating the summary for. So it, it contains everything. Uh, here you can see central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So uh, yeah, so the summary has been generated and it tells you the concise summary around that video. It doesn't give you uh, like a lot of hesitation of the summary. It gives you a concise summary and then talking about the notes part, yeah, so here you can see a lot of figures are there in the video. So uh, I'm generating notes. So it's generating sequentially in a generative way. Uh, so the notes is coming and you can even see if we are, if we are, you can get a like proper segmentation. The uh, chapter headings, the headings are in uh, proper SSA format. 
and at the last you get all the figures which are there in the video you get you get all the figures in the notes which are there in the video so you can refer to the figures and now i'll show you the live live demo through our website i think we have uh, this one maybe this one uh, so this is the chat with video uh, feature i'll just add this It'll take some time. I'll, I'll run other feature as well because it takes time to load like some 40 seconds. Okay, so let me run in the meantime, we get to the questions. So the online question, uh, there, are, there is a lot of visual content in the slides, example figures, flowcharts, etc. How is this information utilized? Um, and I think maybe a follow on on that question is, many visual question answering require complex reasoning involving different modalities like transcript and visuals mm. um, that, that's how, the usp of ours. how complex reasoning questions can be handled so i think what what uh, uh, i think what tanuja is alluding to is that you might need to look both text and the image in order to answer right. can your system uh, right. uh, resolve those or is it only on the text that you answer no no we are we're doing that's what i uh, described we are doing both visual part plus the auditory part and uh, the figures part how we are analyzing the figures so we we like we have uh, um, already started the work around analyzing the figures as well uh, due to the time constraint of the hackathon for the hackathon purpose we are still here for the future scope uh, we want to do like let's say a figure is given so you get us uh, even a like a uh, note about the video uh, about the figures that it is a neuron figure this is the dendrite part and this is the exon part like that got it okay so maybe to summarize my answer what you're saying is that the images are being captured and recorded at the end you cannot answer big questions based on the images alone right. you are answering mostly based on the text right correct? Okay. only for the images part like only for the figures uh, for the node generation and everything this, that is what so you are looking at that six second attention right and you are saying that there are let's say there are multiple uh, i mean the same slide is being loaded in parts because you are basically highlighting right. then you look at the distance metric which you clearly define now hmm. how do you know which out of this slide because only when you pass it to ocr hmm. you will know that there are certain characters which are read with confidence there are certain characters not read so let's say you have two pictures of the full slide how will you figure out which is the slide that you will keep because your metrics are more uh, looking at similarity and stuff they are not looking at OCR quality. Uh, we are OCR is a post process. So. Um, no, ma'am. Like, we are looking at both part. I'll show you here. Uh, we have described it here as well. Uh, so for this, uh, we are using Levenstein distance for the textual similarity. Okay. So it's OC OCR part as well. So we are doing both. Uh, that's what we faced as a challenge also. Uh, so we were getting a lot of no, um, like similar Correct. data. Then we we tried this. We found it like we researched about it and we found Levenstein distance. And so we are using that first. So, so yes, these sir. are like kind of similar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll, uh, this demo. And uh, for cropping the images, so do you do like image segmentation and other aspects and then uh, remove the image or mask it? Hmm. is what you were saying and then pass it to no, we are doing perspective cropping uh, we, and uh, like sure. for the image cropping we are uh, we are taking the biggest rectangle uh, available here so for this one for we're taking the cropping. biggest rectangle uh, which is there and we are doing perspective cropping we have implemented both of the approaches algorithm okay. uh, if the perspective uh, cropping doesn't work then uh, if it doesn't give a good then we are uh, taking the biggest square rectangle uh, whichever is present so last question is like uh, after you do OCR right you're probably leveraging LLMs to do the summarization and question yes, generation mm -hmm. for images what is the option like uh, what do you plan to use uh, for images we have like we have gone through models like clip and uh, BERT and like even Gemini supports it uh, the or uh, uh, visual to text part so we are like trying for this model this is our future scope if we get like yeah, yeah. And even there's there's one good research paper on cloud three yeah. that we are trying to implement. Uh, and which and which model did you use for uh, OCR? Uh, we have used East text detection. It's efficient and uh, stable text. Use. So uh, this is the that demo right. part. Uh, Just one more question, okay? Um, all right. Next question is: um, Can you take? Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. 
how how is the factfulness and grounding of the information in the given video verified and they have, i think tanuja has suggested two papers to you video chat and video agent i'll send them across to you separately uh, yes. but how do you verify the factfulness and groundedness of the information correct because there are a lot of leakages right possibly in your um, in in your slide detection and this one or in ocr itself there could be leakage uh, etc so how do you ensure that leakages don't happen and how do you ensure grounding as well so we have uh, we have used a rag model and uh, we have used retrieval qa and that's uh, yeah one more feature i uh, forgot to tell it's abstractive and extractive summary so extractive is whatever the teacher whatever the uh, text we generated out of the video that is the extractive part and the abstractive part is coming from the ai so uh, so extractive is whatever the teacher taught similar to uh, making questions best out, out of them and and uh, the others are coming from the uh, abstractive part and we even tested this uh, uh, preeti ma'am is like preeti ma'am is a teacher so uh, we even like made her try this and she loved it all right uh, any yeah. and this is the quiz uh, part demo so you can download the quiz pdf if, uh, uh, for teachers like, let's say they want to uh, create a test or something so you can even download the quiz so here you get uh, the quiz uh, we have currently set a parameter of 10 uh, 10 questions which are generated and then at the last you get answers uh, and and for the you can take the interactive quiz let's say i'm a student i want to take interactive quiz so you see that was brain and behavior uh, surrounding around nervous system so it's generating very accurate uh, go to next you can choose the options first. and then you get an instant grading you can check your score yeah, so uh, you have got a score and you get a, um, a what is correct answer and uh, like this. Uh, just one question. Uh, could you go back to that architecture uh, slide? There, um, like you have one classification, right? Between that uh, uh, slide, others, uh, presenter and that. So how, uh, so how did okay. you, uh, like how do you get the data for the, how do you get the, like you want to do a classification, how are you labeling those? So we trained a ResNet uh, from ImageNet checkpoints. We trained it on on these data sets. So we gave we what we took is we took MIT uh, open access website videos and there are a lot of uh, similar videos on YouTube. And then we extracted frames. We manually annotated them as slides, presenter slide and others. And then you this is the slides very basic one, uh, very basic one. And this is the presenter slide. So you have to crop it for uh, removing the other is waste okay, because so it's covering the whole. So yeah, yeah thanks.